Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to Code Katas, episode three. Well, we're gonna break things down one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. We're gonna break things down one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. Code Wars, Code Katas, Code Wars, Code Katas, Code Wars, Code Katas, yeah. Cool. That's the new intro song, by the way. <laughs> um, let's do this. So if you haven't watched before, in this show, I solve Code Katas live in front of you and talk through my process. I solve them in several different ways, and uh, we'll get into it. So I do have a GitHub repo where you can suggest Katas for me to solve. Um, there aren't any new suggestions, so I picked a few out. But if you're watching live, you can suggest some in the chat, throw a message in the chat, say hello, and I'd be happy to try out some of those as well. Um, yeah, so if you do want to suggest one, you can go into this issue thread on GitHub, paste a link to the one you want me to try, and I'll see what I can do. Cool, but let's not waste any time. Uh, the, and I'm actually going to go in order of uh, least difficult to a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to seven. I'm going to start with uh, eight, six. Yeah, six Q. And then we'll do a, actually, oh, I thought these were, oh, sorry. This is a 7Q, then another 7Q, and then we'll do a 6Q, a 6Q, and then lastly, we'll do a 5Q. So progressively, it gets a little bit harder. Thanks, Brooks. Um, and actually, Brooks, we should talk soon. I want to I wanna do a pairing stream sometime next week. We should, we should get that going. Um, cool, yeah, so I'm going to start with the, this one. It's called Val Count. And uh, the directions are this. Return the number or the count of vowels in a given string. We will consider A, E, I, O, and U as vowels for this kata. The input string will only consist of lowercase letters and or spaces. So in this, this kata, Y is not considered a vowel. So let's try it out. Let's do this. Cool. So here's my thought process. So string here is going to be the input. So what we should do is iterate over the string. If the current letter is A, E, I, O, or U, <laughs> um, then we will increase the vowels count and that's it. So it's, it's a pretty, pretty simple algorithm. I do want to show multiple ways of doing this, though, because we could have like a pretty uh, long if statement, or we could do something else to make it a little bit easier. Cool. Um, all right, so first thing, we'll iterate over the string. So I need a simple for loop. We're going to start at 0 and go while i is less than string.length. And we'll increment i on every iteration. And we'll do what this comment says. So if the current letter, and actually I'm going to create a variable for the current letter. So let's say uh, current letter is the string at i. We'll say if current letter is equal to a. Um, and I've actually, I've seen this, I've seen a lot of beginner programmers make this mistake. You might say a or e or i or O or uh, U. However, uh, or, or statements in JavaScript don't work this way. So uh, this is actually only going to compare current letter with A on the first one. And then the rest of these are just like true because they're a value. So we actually need to compare current letter with every single one of these. So if current letter is A, if current letter is E, I, if current letter is O, or if current letter is U. And that's really ugly and long, and I will show a way where we can make that a little bit nicer. So if that's the case, we can then increment current letter. So current letter plus plus. Uh, well, not current letter, sorry. Vowel, vowels count plus plus. And let's make this a let. Um, and let's see if it works. Sample tests. Uh, it worked. Tipsy, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, so that works. So let me let me show you how we can make this um, 
much easier to read than just a bunch of or statements. So uh, one thing we can do is actually use an object. Um, and so if we create an object that has properties A, E, I, O, and U, and then set just some property value on them, I'll, I'll use like true, then we can just say, is the current letter inside of that object? And if it is, we know that it is a val. So um, I'm going to save this one locally because I will be pushing this up to GitHub. Uh, where are we at? Yeah, so let's create vowel count.js. Whoa, that's not right. And if you're just joining in, uh, say hello in the chat. And also, if you have a kata for, uh, that you'd like me to try out, uh, throw a link. You might have to just put the name of the kata, because I don't think you can put links in the chat. Uh, but I'd be happy to try one. So that's not it. That's it, but I want to show this with an object. So here's what we can do. We can say um, vowels is an object that has a property A, that's true. Property uh, E, that's true. I is true. O is true. A, E, I, O, and U is true. And now that we have this object in JavaScript, you can simply just say if vowels at current letter. So uh, if the vowels object has a property that is the current letter, and if that uh, letter is A-E-I-R-U, this will be true and will increment the vowel count. So this is a little bit cleaner than a bunch of or statements, and it should work the same way. So let's try it out. Run sample tests. That worked. Let's attempt it. Cool. Um, the, <laughs> the, the other thing we could do is probably a reduce. Um, and I, actually, we'll do that, because this, 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 this challenge was simple enough. Uh, comment in the chat, is it just me, or someone has already told you that you look like Zach Galifianakis? No. <laughs> I don't think I do. Um, some people do say this is like a uh, Steve uh, Zisu hat from The Life Aquatic. Yeah, like a little red hat like that. Bill Murray. Uh, Zach Galifianakis. I don't see the resemblance. I don't know. Maybe you do. <laughs> cool. Uh, but yeah, let's let's do this the same problem with a reduce also. I'm going to use the, the same trick by having this vowels object. Um, but essentially, what we want to do is we're going to write a reduce function that returns the count. So we'll say return string.split. So string.split will turn that string into an array so that we can use reduce. And then this will take in the uh, vowels count and the current letter. And the reduce will start off at 0. So vowels count starts at 0. And then inside of there, we just need to do this and get rid of everything else. So um, this reduce basically says, if the current letter, um, let's take a quick break. Whew. If the current letter is a vowel, increment the count. And one thing you need to do in the reduce is always return the accumulator. So we will return vowels count. And that should also do it. Um, we could get really fancy and then like filter out the um, vowels and then return the length of the array. It's actually less performant because we have multiple iterations, but it should still work. So let's do a sample test on this. Oh, no. Um, We've got vowels, we've got vowels count. We're returning vowels count and we're starting it off at zero. Expected five got zero. Let's try to run this locally. We'll do uh, abracadabra. Make sure it equals five.
don't think I'm doing anything wrong. <laughs> Let's see. False. Not equal to five. Hmm. Let's. Maybe I'm just like totally out of it. What am I doing wrong here? Um, oh, do I? I need to split. I, I see. I need to split on the empty string, I think. There we go. That's why. <laughs> So make sure we split on the empty string. Because I think otherwise, not sure what it does. Cool. So last thing I'll do is we'll use a filter. Because we can use a filter to filter out all of the vowels. And then uh, just return the length of the array. So I'll do uh, string.split.filter. And filter is going to give us the current letter. And we're going to say if, um, let's get rid of this stuff. If the vowels uh, at the current letter is there, then we're going to return true. And then we want to return the length of that filtered array. Um, and we can make this even smaller, but let's make, this, make sure this works. So basically, we turn the string into an array. We filter down to only the, the letters that are vowels. So the way a filter works is if you return true, you're going to get that value back in the new array. And if we return nothing, it's undefined. So that if that value wasn't a vowel, we're not going to get it in the array. And then we return the length of that array, because that array just has vowels inside of it. Let's see if this works. Try. It worked. Um, let's make this even smaller. <laughs> um, so because this is going to either return a truthy or a falsy value, I can simply just return vowels at current letter. So we could just do that. And that is our whole function. Um, can't see it all on the screen. But basically, turn it into an array, filter on the letters, return true for that letter if it's in that object, and then return its length. And this should work too. Try. Cool. Um, I am going to submit, I'm going to submit the for loop one, um, mainly because, and the for loop one with the object, um, mainly because it's the least amount of iteration. So we have one for loop here, and in one for loop, um, we have the result. When we use reduce, we also have to use split, which might be optimized, but you can think of a split. It still has to go over the whole string to split it up. So that's like one iteration of the string, and then another iteration of the string, and then similar with a split and filter, because that'll iterate it once, and that'll iterate it again. But if we use just a single for loop, that's one iteration. Attempt. Cool. I'm going to play a sound. <laughs> awesome. That was the first one. Uh, not too hard, but lots of different ways to solve it. And um, this this object trick here comes in handy a lot. So let's submit final. How are you doing? I'm OK. <laughs> this is taking a while. That's going, I mean, I have the other one in an open tab. Cool. Um, interesting. So uh, this person used a regular expression. So they basically said, uh, if, well, no, um, only match the strings in, uh, the characters in the string that are A-E-I-R-U using a regular expression, and then return the length of that array. And if there were none, return 0, with, uh, the length of an empty array. Cool. On to the next one. Um, this one is called complementary DNA. So this one says, deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, is a chemical found in the nucleus of cells and carries the instructions for the development and functioning of living organisms. If you want to know more, check out Wikipedia. Um, in DNA strings, symbols A and T are complements of each other, as C and G. You have a function with one side of the DNA, D, the DNA string and you need to get the other complementary side. DNA strands, strand is never empty, or there is no DNA at all. So for example, if you're given this string, anytime you see an A, you're going to return a T. 
anytime you see a T, you're going to return an A. Anytime you see a G, you're going to return a C. And anytime you see a C, you're going to return a G. So they complement each other. You're essentially determining if you, whichever letter you see, you're going to return the opposite. Not return, but that, that's what's going to be in the resulting complementary DNA. Let's try it. So let's grab our examples. Enhance. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> cool. So um, A and T are complements, and C and G are complements. So here's what I want to do. Um, first, we need a place to store the complement complement string. Then we're going to iterate over DNA. Um, if the current letter is a, an A, append a T. Else, if the current letter is, an, is a T, append a A, an A, A or an, like that. <laughs> Else, if the current letter is a C, append a G. And then lastly, if the current letter is a G, then append a C. And then after all of that, we're going to return the complement string. All right, this one seems pretty easy too. <laughs> um, all right, place to store the complement string. Let's say um, let complement equals the empty string. So we started off as the empty string, so we can start to append to it. And then we need to iterate over DNA. So we'll use a for loop. Let i equal 0, while i is less than DNA.length. Increment i every time. And then we'll do this stuff. So um, and again, I'm going to solve it this way, but this is a perfect case for an object as well. But let's use if statements. So if uh, current letter, so let's store that in a variable. And that's going to be DNA brackets, the current index. So if the current letter is an A, then we're going to append a T. So complement plus equals T. Else, if the current letter is a T, we will append an A. So complement A. OK. Else, if the current letter is a C, then we will append a G. So complement plus equals G. And lastly, do the opposite of that. So if the current letter is a G, then we will append a C. And then we return the complement. Whoa now. And that's passing for the basic tests. Cool. So let's let's make this nicer. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Um about the chat. I was looking at the chat. Okay. Let's bring this down locally and write it ten other ways. Not ten. We'll we'll do it a few different ways. So let's create uh DNA complement.js. Did it get created? What happened? Oh I did. I did the wrong thing. So with that function, it works just fine. But now let's use an object. So here's my thought. We can have an object, and essentially every letter will be a key, and the value will be what its complement is. So inside of here, we can just append the value from the object according to the current letter like this. So 
let um, complements be an object, and A has a complement of T, and T has a complement of A, and uh, G has a complement of C, and C has a complement of G. So now that I have this object, I can simply just pluck out the complement I need inside of here without having to do all of this if-else logic. So we'll basically just say uh, complement plus equal complements at the current letter. Because if the current letter is an A, it's going to give me the value T. So we're going to append a T. If it's a T, it'll give me the value A, etc. So it's a little bit simpler. Let's try it out. Works on the sample tests. Works on the attempt. Hey, Brett, welcome. Yeah, easy enough. Let's do it with a, um, I guess we could use a map. Uh, because, well, it, it, we are dealing with strings, but essentially, if you would think of this input as an array of characters, we want to map that to this array of characters. So the, the usually use a map when you want to take one array, turn it into a new array of the same length, but with different values inside of it. So that's essentially what we're doing here. Hey, Wes, appreciate it. So I'm going to use this, this object um, style because it works. It's pretty cool. But let's use a map. So we no longer need to store the complement. We're just going to return a map. So let's return DNA.split. So split the DNA into an array. And then we're going to map it. And that's going to give us the, let's just call it letter. And we want to return complements at that letter. So this results in an array, but with the complements in it. And then we just want to join that back together on the empty string. Whoa, now. Empty string. Cool. And um, you, you could write a function body for this that returns it, but uh, if you're not familiar with fat arrows, basically if a fat arrow only has a single statement in it, it means return that statement. So what this says is take the input DNA, split it into an array, and then for every letter inside of that, return its complement. And so you're now going to have a new array of complements. And then we take that array and join it back together into a string. Let's see. Try. It works. Attempt. It works. All right, uh, let's get a drum roll going. It's probably going to work. <laughs> Wait. Oh, no, I got to open it. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's taking way too long. I think it's going to work, though. I'll give a preemptive. Wait. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Hit this. <laughs> OK. Oh, no. It's still working. Oh, well. All right. On to the next one. Um, and as I mentioned, if you are just joining the chat and you have a suggestion for a kata for me to do, feel free to throw a link. Um, you might need to do, like, you, you probably won't be able to share a link, but you can just throw just the name of the kata, and I should be able to find it. This is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. If you're watching at home and you're sitting down, maybe stand up for a few seconds. If you have a beverage nearby, take a sip. Tonight I'm drinking Lemon La Croix. <laughs> it's almost the same color as my green screen, so that's why. <laughs> cool. All right, this one's going to be a little more challenging. It's going to be a fun one. OK. Um, you live in the city of Cartesia like Cartesian coordinates, yeah? uh, where all roads are laid out in a perfect grid. You arrived 10 minutes too early to an appointment, so you decide to take the opportunity to go for a short walk. The city provides its citizens with a walk-generating app on their phones. Every time you press the button, it sends you an array of one-letter strings representing directions to walk. For example, north, south, west, east. You always walk only a single block in a direction and you, t you know it takes one minute tra to traverse one city block. So create a function that will return true if the walk the app gives you will take exactly 10 minutes 
you don't want to be too early or too late, and will of course return you to your starting point. Return false otherwise. This is going to be tricky. I haven't even thought about how I'm going to do this. Okay. Note, you will always receive a valid array containing a random assortment of direction letters, such as north, south, east, or west only. It will never give you an empty array. That's not a walk. That's standing still. Okay, let's try again. Well, I guess I, I did this one a while back. I still don't know how I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, here's what I want to do, though. I want to I want to visualize this. So I'm going to take some of their example ones and like draw it on a whiteboard, uh, just so we can see like what what we're really looking for. This is called take a 10 minute walk. Okay, so these are some of our examples. Um, let's just log these. And should be good. Let's throw our basic function in here. Okay, I have a whiteboard. I need to find a marker real quick. I don't know how I'm gonna hold it up. I don't know, I'll be right back though. Don't go anywhere. Actually, I have no idea if I have, <laughs> have a marker. <clears throat> okay, we'll do this. I have a permanent marker and some paper. We'll use that. Okay. So well let's let's do this this very first one because that one should return true. And we'll kind of see what we're looking for. So um, let's say this is north, east, south, and west. So um, let's say we start right here. We go north. We then go south. <laughs> we'll just walk right back where you came from. We then go north. We then go south. Oh, it's just flipping back and forth. <laughs> okay, so we go north. We go south. We go north. We go south. We go north. We go south. How many of them are there? There are, you can see that. There are one, two, three, four, five. So there are five pairs of north, south. So north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And we, we started here and we ended back here. So this is a valid walk. Kaizen from Namibia, awesome. 4.50 a.m. <laughs> You're waking up way too early, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, and actually, Kaizen, um, I, I replied to you on Twitter, quick aside. Um, wait, that's not the right thing. That's the right thing. But on my website, I have the stream times. Can you check and see if the, the days are correct now? I tried to fix it, um, but not totally sure if it's going to work. Um, but let, yeah, let, let me let me know if that works for you. Okay, but ultimately, this first one was valid because this would take a total of ten minutes because it's one. Well, um, yeah, if we if we read the the description again, um, you always walk only a single block in a direction, and you know it takes you one minute to traverse one city block. So uh, this is basically ten minutes because we're doing one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, six minute, seven minute, eight minute. So wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's not totally 10, but I think um, exactly 10. Maybe I didn't have enough pairs. Let's, let's double check that. <laughs> so uh, one, two, three, four, five, and I have, let me grab another color. I have one, two, three, four. I didn't have enough. Go north, go south, 
This is our fifth one. It takes 10 total minutes. Okay. So if we look at this next one, it says it should return false. So this says you go west, you then go east. Oh, I see. So similar thing, but there are 11 pairs, I mean, sorry, six pairs instead of five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, which would make 12 total minutes. So here's what I'm thinking. Right off the bat, we know that if the length, if the length of the array is not 10, sorry, is not, um, yeah, it's not 10, then it's not 10 minutes and we can immediately return false. So let's, let's write that logic in there. So if length of array is not 10, immediately return false. Okay. But now let's try a different one where the length of the array is 10 and see what we end up with. So this one does have a, uh, an array of length 10, but let's, let's visualize what's actually happening. Oh, it's working, Kaizen? Awesome. I did some, some tricky JavaScript magic to make it work. Cool. Okay. So we start here. We go north. We go, well, I'm going to need, no, I need a bigger piece of paper. Okay. Not that. So start here. We go north one. We go north two. We go north three. So that puts us there. We go south one, we go north one, we go south one, we go north one, we go south one, we go north one, we go south one. And this is false because we Oh, I'm blocking the code, sorry. <laughs> um, we start here and we end there. This is like impromptu. I didn't know I was gonna pull out this piece of paper. Hope it, hope it's, hope it's okay. <laughs> um, but this is tricky. Like how, how can we keep track of to know that we end back at the same place we started, right? Because what if, what if we were given, um, let's say go north, go um, east, go south, go west, we end up back at the same spot, right? Um, so we need to figure out how, how can we make sure that we, we end up at the same, same spot? I don't know. I have no idea. I have to think hard about this. Uh, I lost my pin caps. There's one. But I think we're on to something, right? So uh, the very first thing, if the length of the array is not 10, immediately return false. Easy enough. So if walk.length does not equal 10, return false. OK. Let's see how many we can solve by just doing that. OK, good call, Bricks. So Bricks is saying every north requires the exact same number of souths, because that'll put you back at the same place. And every east requires the exact same number of wests, and I guess vice versa because that would make sure that you end up back at the same spot. That sounds good. I like that. Um, but just by just uh, making sure the length is not 10, it works for all of them, I think, for the last one, because that should return false. So let's do this. Let's do, um, here's what I want to do. I want to say uh, keep track of north count. Keep track of south count. Keep track of west count. Keep track of east count. OK. If north count, well, I'm not going to write the code, but we'll say um, yes. Right, OK. So if uh, north count minus 
south count is zero and west count minus east count is zero, then we know that we had the same number of north and south and the same number of uh, east and west. Um, then we will return true. Else we will return false. Easy enough. Let's try it. So uh, in order to keep track of north count, we actually need to iterate over the array. Um, so I, I guess I missed that here. So but basically, a place to store north count, a place to store south count, a, a place to store west count. And we'll say um, iterate over walk, increase uh, the given direction count. And then after we've iterated over the walk, we have the total counts. OK, so for these counts, I'm actually, I'll put that in an object. So we'll say counts is a, an array. And then we'll have, um, we are given lowercase letters. Yeah, so we'll have west starts at 0. What let's do? North, east, south, west. I always remember this as never eat sour watermelons. Does anyone remember the, the mnemonic you used in school? <laughs> um, I've heard a few different ones. Cool. So we're keeping track of the counts there. And then we're going to iterate over the walk. So let's do four. Let i equal 0, while well, i is less than um, walk.length. Oh, good call. Sorry about that. Ugh, I think you missed all of the comments that I just typed. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't even looking. OK, uh, let me, before, before I do this, let's, let's re just review what I just typed there, because you probably couldn't see any of it. So basically, I have this object. We're going to keep track of um, the counts of each of the, the different locations inside of it. And then we'll iterate over the walk. And each location that we come across, we're going to increment the count here. And then afterwards, if north and south count, uh, north minus south count is 0, and uh, west minus east count is 0, that means there are the same number of steps in those directions, return true, because that would put us back at our starting location. Otherwise, return false. OK. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Oh, I get it. We can't see, Jay. <laughs> um, I think I think it's a little bit delayed. You should be able to see me now. Sorry about that. OK. All right. So now let's iterate over the walk. That's hilarious. That's that's what I get for trying to draw stuff. I think I think this this helped, though, right? I think I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to get get a whiteboard mounted somewhere, like switch cameras. It's going to be great. OK, so we're going to start i at 0, while i is less than walk.length. So we're going to look at every direction. Increment i. And then we'll say uh, counts at the direction. So the direction is going to be walk at i. So that'll just give us the current direction they're going in. And we'll say counts at that direction plus plus. OK. Um, and I don't think they're going to give us anything that's not northeast, south, or west. So that should be good. So this iterates and increments all of the counts. Let's take a quick break. Start counting. It's not counting. I don't know. <laughs> take a quick stretch. Take a sip of your beverage. OK, so lastly, we will say if counts.north minus counts.south is equal to 0 and counts. Uh, oh, I didn't. It's just in. It's not north. So in and s. And if counts.w uh, minus counts.e is 0, then we will return true. Otherwise, we will return false. Cool. I think that should do it. Thanks for thanks for the tip, Brooks. That was actually pretty easy. 
if it works. Um, I think mathematically, directionally, it should work. <laughs> uh, let's try it locally. Uh, not that one. Node, take a 10 minute walk. On soul is not defined. No, it is not. Should return true, should return false. Um, the second one, what? The second one is returning true? Everything's returning true. <laughs> Let's see how many this has. This has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that length is 12. We should immediately be returning false. So if the length is not 10, return false. Oh! It's doing not. That's why. It, it was for the tests. We want. I want to see what it actually returns. So it's, it's working. Cool. <laughs> cool. All right, let's try it. Um, let's see if we can think of a way to clean this up a bit. Maybe we can't, but it's worth a try. Um, we definitely might be able to use a reduce. Like, we want to reduce this array to counts and then do this return. And then technically, we could also do some like special logic in there and reduce the array to either true or false. Let's first let's first just uh, use let's turn this right here into a reduce. So we are going to say counts is equal to walk dot reduce. This is going to give us the counts and the direction, and this reduce function is going to start with that object. So this is our accumulator. Um, and this is the interesting thing about reduce. Your accumulator can start as anything. Like in the, the previous example, I think we started it as like a string or a number. In this one, we're going to start our accumulator as an object with these properties. And then this counts is going to be this, this object. So at the end of every reducer, we need to return counts. But inside of here, we just do that. So inside the reducer, we say counts at that direction increment. And then we end up with a nice object that has all of those counts inside of it. And then we do the same logic on it. So that should work in the same way. Cool. Um, but I want to move, I, I basically, instead of um, reducing Instead of reducing it and then doing some logic, we could reduce the whole thing to true or false. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this logic in here. And basically, we'll say, so on the reduce, you also get access to the index, the current index in the array. So we'll say, um, if index is less than walk.length minus 1. Yeah, so uh, if we're still inside of the array, then return that object, because we're, we're going to be using that um, every time. Otherwise, we'll do this. Actually, I should be able to do just, just an else if. So our, re our reducer is returning an object to begin with, but then on the very last reduction, it returns a boolean instead. And so now we can just return walk.reduce. Try it. That seems to work. Let's try it here. Sample tests. And uh, it passed. Let's do a quick attempt. Drum roll, please. It's been taking a really long time. Uh, let's do. <laughs> it 
it worked. Cool. Um, let me submit final. If you give me just one second, I will be right back. Cool, I'm back. Um, and Kaizen in the chat um, said he's in the clan. <laughs> I'm, I'm back now. Um, the, the chat's a little bit delayed. But yeah, uh, quick note, if you go into your profile settings and you set your, actually, is it account settings? Yeah, if you set your clan to be Coding Garden, uh, we can all uh, be in the same clan and kind of uh, see all of our stats against each other. So um, I believe if you go to the home page, you can see anyone in your clan. So there's um heck, there's uh, Pijo, Ska, there's Kaizen, there's Bob. Yeah, so if you want to join the clan, just set your name to Coding Garden. Cool. Um, and that worked. So moving on to the next one, an IQ test. <laughs> Save this one. Cool. So Bob is preparing to pass an IQ test. The most frequent task in this test is to find out which one of the given numbers differs from the others. Ooh. Bob observed that one number usually differs from the others in evenness. Help Bob. To check his answers, he needs a program that among the given numbers finds one that is different in evenness and return a position of this number. A coding garden with a space, so coding space garden for the, the clan name, yeah. Um, so keep in mind that your task is to help Bob solve a real IQ test, which means indexes of the elements start from one, not zero, okay. But the idea is you look at the array and if all of the numbers are even and only one number is odd, you return the index of the odd number. So in this case, everything is even except for seven, so you return the index three, one, index, uh, one based. Um, and in this one, everything is odd except for two, so you return index two. Let's see what we can do. Oh, we'll grab our examples in here. Enhance. Okay. So, um, oh, Bob, you took an IQ test today? No way. Did you get the the result? Are you average? I think I'm. I think I'm average. I have. I've never taken a legit IQ test, but I have a plain old average IQ. <laughs> Nothing special. Okay, um, here's my thought. So we will keep track of the number of even numbers and the number of odd numbers. And whichever one is um, only has one, that's, oh. We also need to keep track of their like the last indice we saw of it. Okay, so we need to uh, keep track of even count and the last index we saw of even. Keep track of odd count and the last index we saw of odd. And then um, if even count is one, we will return the index, the last index we saw. And um, my thought is, if there's only one, when we, if, because we're keeping track of the index, since there's only one, we'll just have that. 
And if there are multiple indices, it doesn't matter that it's getting overwritten because we only care about the one where there is one. So if the even count is one, return the last uh, even index we saw. Else if the odd count is one, return the last odd index we saw. Cool, and then I should do it. Um, Bob got a, a 120. I, th I think that's about what my IQ is. It's all good, just keep writing code, building apps. Nobody will care. <laughs> uh, James Ross, love the video, CJ, especially the code worth ones. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, Kaizen, exactly, it's not all about IQ. And James Ross is jealous of my attitude. Eh. <laughs> I'm just happy to write some code. Yeah, Bob, you're still a genius to yourself. You're a genius to me. Call yourself a genius. Cool. So um, keep track of the even count and the last index we saw of even. So we could do two variables. I'm just going to create an object. So let's say uh, even is an object that has the um, count and the last index. And we'll set that to negative 1. And then we'll do something very similar, but we'll do it for odd. OK. Um, and we will need to iterate over numbers. And if even um, increment even count and store index if odd increment odd count and store the index that should do it <laughs> yeah kaizen's mentioning i mean a lot of people that are geniuses don't exactly know how to function in society so I'd rather I'd rather be friendly have friends live a, a nice life than be ostracized no, I'm not not every genius is like that though <laughs> and yes CJ has spoken Bob is a genius our supreme leader is 230 subscribers away from a thousand I am very close to a thousand subscribers please don't call me su supreme leader um, but yeah, it's it's happening. I guess I've I've been streaming consistently for the past three weeks. This is the third week in a row where I've done, um, I think it's the third week, maybe it's the fourth. But I've done uh, five streams a week, so I'm staying consistent. And pretty soon, I'm gonna actually start uploading shorter tutorial videos, um, and hopefully that'll get the subscribers to come in as well. But I want to host my own TV show one day. Like I want coding to go mainstream. Like you turn on PBS and you learn code with CJ. I don't know. Cool. So let's iterate over numbers. Let i equal 0. Well, i is less than numbers.length. And I think numbers, yeah, that's the name of our variable. Uh, we will increment the index. And if it's even. So to de determine if it's even, uh, let's Let's store the current number in a variable. <laughs> Kim Jong CJ, no, no, thank you. Um, so the current number is numbers at i, and if current number, if the remainder of the division by two is equal to zero, then we know that this is an even number. And we'll say um, even dot count plus plus and even dot last index. Oh no, what just happened? I accidentally opened my mail. Sorry, pressed the wrong keys. <laughs> okay, so and then even dot last index is equal to i. But remember, they said the indice the uh, the indices should be one based instead of zero based. So we need to, to add 1 to the index when we set the last index. Cool. And actually, if it's not even, then it is odd. So we can just do an else. And we'll say um, 
odd.count plus plus and odd.lastindex um, is the current index. Cool. So if the even count is one, return the last even index we saw. So if uh, even.count is one, then we will return even.lastindex. And if it's not clear, I'm calling it last index because for either even or odd, um, I mean, there is only going to be one index. But if, if there are a bunch of even numbers in there, it's going to be overwriting the last index every time. So um, yeah, essentially, I'm calling it last index because it's literally the last index we saw of that type, even if there was only one. Cool. So um, else uh, odd dot. Oh, so, so if even count was not one, then we automatically know that um, the odd count was one based on, on the requirements. So then we can just return um, odd.lastindex. Cool. Does it work? Oh, no. Basic, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you say that. Um, you know, so Bob Bob says the Bob Ross of coding, and uh, James said you'd watch me cook, eat food, paint, play a video game, or whatever. I real I've thought about for a while. I thought about like live streaming my life. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, but I, I actually may soon. I might do that on Twitch, like cooking and playing games on Twitch, coding on YouTube, or I've thought about. Uh, streaming on Twitch and then um, like editing down those streams and uploading those to YouTube. Lots of options. <laughs> yeah, here on Coding Garden, we don't make mistakes, just happy accidents. Fractal trees. That would be fun, Brooks. Um, yeah, I've been watching a lot. Well, not, not a lot, but I, I have been uh, keeping up with uh, coding train I think he does he might have done fractal trees yeah fractal tree yeah so um, basically it's a tree that like starts to split out that would be fun to code up okay I am stalling because my answer is wrong <laughs> let's figure out why um, so let's create a file called IQ test.js let's throw this in there and then Let's do this. So we're going to log. Uh, when we call it with that is the answer three. And when we call it with this is the answer one. Let's try it. Node IQ test. Oh, nine? How am I getting a nine? I did something weird here. So if the current number, if the remainder of the division by two is zero, that means it's even. So we're going to increment the even count and set the last index to be current index plus one. And if it's not even, that means it's odd. We're going to increment the odd count and set the last index. Um, so if even dot count is one, meaning we only found one even, then we should return its last index. Um, but if the count was more than that, then that means that we want to return the odd last index. However, that seems to be failing for this one. So two, four, six, eight. Let's let's just log. Let's log even and odd and see what we end up with. Count is eight. Oh, how how did the count become two?
Let's let's do this. Let's log even. I'm I'm doing something weird here. I'm I'm gonna find the bug though. We will find it. So odd, odd. So odd. The count is two. Why is the count two for odd for this very first one? Because that remainder is zero. That remainder. Oh, it's a string. Yeah. Good call. I, I need to, I need to uh, split this into an array. That's why. Dang, I didn't even look at the chat. At the chat. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Good call. So, I yeah. I'm I'm actually yeah. It's looking at when empty string mod to. Yeah. Okay. I need to turn this into an array. So let's do uh, numbers equals numbers dot split on the space. Hey, okay, that's why. <laughs> Good call. Um, there are suggestions for the Chrome Inspector. That might be fun to do. Um, I did figure it out, though. Um, let's see if this works, and then I'll see how easy it is to get the Chrome Inspector up and going. Because that will actually let you set breakpoints, and we can see what the code is in real time. Yeah, that was the issue. Um, but yeah, no debugger. Isn't there? Is there like a command line flag that um, will start up debugger? Inspect. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We are gonna throw the word debugger right there. And that sets a breakpoint. So when we start the debugger, it's going to stop on that line of code before it goes into the next one. So let's try it. I think I have the latest version of Node, or at least one that supports it. So node inspect iq test.js. OK. So what this does is it starts up a, an inspector of my code. And I can actually um, go to this URL, I believe, in Chrome. And I get Chrome DevTools, but for my Node process. So that didn't work. What about that? That didn't work. Um, I thought there was a Chrome debugger. Yeah, let's let's look at see how we can get the inspector. Did I do? Is it dash dash inspect or just inspect? Let's see, debugging guide. Um, when started with the dash dash inspect switch, a Node.js process listens for WebSockets. The full URL is that. Inspector also includes an HTTP endpoint. That's what we want, the HTTP endpoint. Let's take a quick break. <laughs> uh, Kaizen says, he came for here for this nuggets of gold. And this, this is pretty sweet. Like you could actually do this with Node.js apps, um, and um, use the the Chrome Dev Tools to step through like a request handler or something like that. Um, HTTP host port JSON JSON dot list. So if I go, well, not that. If I go to JSON slash list, then. No, I thought that's going to give me a WebSocket debugger URL. Chrome DevTools. Oh, OK. Open Chrome Inspect in a Chrome browser. There it is. Cool. So. Um, yeah, so for, for whatever reason, because I've used different debuggers in the past. I think there was like Chrome debugger. But um, when you do this, it starts up the WebSocket thingy. And then now Chrome knows that that's listening. And so when you go to Chrome colon slash slash inspect, you should see it. And now we can click inspect, I think. Inspect, please. <laughs> it's not working. O open dedicated dev tools for Node. Here we go. Um, 
And then the port is 9229. How do I go to it? Edit. Console. Sources. Um, I, I, I tried the website that the output gave me, but this is a WebSocket protocol. And that didn't load in the browser. Um, and then this JSON list. If I actually go to this, f I don't. I don't think this will be the debugger. Yeah, that's just the file. I've done this before. Uh, copy the DevTools front end URL from the output of JSON list. Install the Chrome extension. Oh, I need to install the Node. Just read the instructions. Okay, add to Chrome. Um, node inspector manager. Wait, what just happened? It went away. <laughs> I really want this to work. Come on. Let's close that. Inspect. Yeah, okay, I guess that's true, yeah. So the, the documentation said dash dash aspect. Let's let's see. So if I do it exited immediately though. I do have a breakpoint. So the debugger in here. Let's try it with inspect again. Now it pops up. Now I click inspect. Nothing happens. Devices, inspect. We're going to get this working. Yeah, I've only been streaming for an hour. Got one more kata. We'll get this working. <laughs> um, if you're watch if you're watching this afterwards, just fast forward a little bit. It'll be working. Everything everything will be great. Um, record the CPU profile. No sources. The, the only thing I'm dealing with is like I click this. Nothing happens. Is there a Okay, here's only I'm, I'm inspecting it. There's no There's no URL <laughs> for the inspect. There's a click handler on it. This can't be that hard. Okay. Open Chrome inspect. Click the configure button and ensure your target host are list. Okay. Configure. Target and host are listed. Let's get rid of that one, because right now it's running on port 9229. Done. Copy DevTools front end URL from the output of JSON list. I don't have a front end URL. Oh, is it that I now? Oh, now that I have that, no. Yeah, it's crazy. So, like, when I use dash dash inspect, it does say debugger listening, but now that I use um, inspect, it is breaking. So breaking on start. So it actually, this will let us go step by step. I just can't get the, the thing to pop up in Chrome. Inspect break, maybe. 
Oh no, I can close Chrome. Come back. Okay, maybe that's it. So instead of inspect, maybe it's dash dash inspect break. Okay. <laughs> it's working, okay. <laughs> okay, so solution was um, you install that extension and then you do dash dash inspect break and that will stop like at the first line of code to run it. Um, and now we can inspect it, very cool. Let's full screen this, let's enhance. So um, basically I have this debugger statement here and this debugger statement here. So when I click play, it stops there and then the debugger tools lets you go like you can go one line at a time, you can jump into a function call, and you can see all kinds of cool stuff. So you can see your local scope and all of the variables available to you. Um, right now, um, this is like node stuff, so you have like um, module exports and require available to you, but you also have IQ tests, and this is the, the function we defined up above. But if I say uh, step into the function call, now this is going to step into console log, we'll step out of console log, and now we're going to step into IQ test. So now we're inside of the function. And you'll notice in my local scope, numbers has the value of a string. And then this is what I was missing before. I wasn't turning it into an array. So now I take the, um, the string, <laughs> split it on the empty space. And so after this, watch, watch local variables. Boom, it turns into an array of those numbers. Um, and then we initialize even, we initialize odd. So now on our scope, we have all these things. And uh, let's, let's watch it happen. So when we go into this for loop, it's going to create the i variable because that's a, a block scope variable. So when I go in there, now you see block scope, i is 0. Um, and, and this is another cool thing if you're, if you're not totally familiar with for loops, you can actually see the steps happening. So what happens is on the first iteration, it checks to make sure that this is true. If it's true, it does the thing. Then it comes back around in increments, but let's watch it happen. So um, is that true? Yes, it is. Let's go into the for loop. Um, numbers is an array. I is zero. So after this line of code runs, current number is two. Then we'll say, uh, is current number uh, divisible by two? That's true, so we'll go into that if statement. And then if we look at even, we're gonna increment its count to one. We're gonna uh, and set the last index to be one, because that's the current index. Now, goes back to the top of the for loop. Notice i is currently zero. It increments it to one. Checks to see, is one less than numbers.length? It is, so it goes into the for loop. We then, um, are going to set current number to be 4, which is the next, next number in the array. 4 is divisible by 2, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're at the number 7. Is 7 divisible by 2? No, it is not. So it goes into the else statement. And then odd, which currently is just totally nothing in there, we increment its count to 1. So now odd, let's minimize these. Odd has a count of 1, and then we set the current index we're on, which is 0, 1, 2, plus 1. So current index is 2, plus 1 is 3. So we just found the first odd number, and we kept track of its index. Now, we already know that every other value in the array is, is, is going to be even, so we're just going to keep on incrementing even. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. You can click in the, the sidebar to set a breakpoint. If you could click play, all of the code up to that point will run. So now the for loop is finished running. And we can see that even, we saw four even numbers, and the last even number we saw was index five. And now, um, even count is not one, so we know that odd count should be one. So the else returns the index of odd, which is three. And that comes here, and it logs it to the console. Um, and actually, well, so we'll, we'll step out. Um, if we look at the console, we can see that it actually log three. And let's just remove the breakpoint. Just click play, click play. And because our program exited, because all of the code ran, it's, it's done. If we go back to the terminal, um, yeah, the code finished. And so now it wants the, the, the debugger to disconnect. But that was super fun. We figured it out. Um, let, me, let me post 
uh, where I found this. So that's there. I'm going to throw that in the chat if you want to debug your node apps. Uh, there we go. Check that out. And the, the key the key to this was that break statement. Yeah, so you do this. Name of file.js. Yeah, so we did this with a basic JavaScript file, but uh, if, sorry about that. If the JavaScript file you do this with is like a Node.js app or anything like that, you can actually debug requests coming into your app, which is pretty cool. Sweet. We're learning stuff on this channel. Having a good time. All right. Cool. Um, and let's, <laughs> let's submit it and make sure it works. We went through all of that. Let's make sure it works. Let's get rid of these debugger statements. Sample tests. All right, sample tests work. Drum roll, please. <laughs> um, so it passed. All right, let's submit the final. I was I was gonna try to refactor that one, but debugging took so long. Let's let's get on to this very last one. And I passed the IQ test, so that should count for something, right? OK, uh, the last one I'm going to do is simple pig Latin. Move the first letter of each word to the end of it. Then add A to the end of the word. Leave punctuation marks untouched. So if you're not familiar with Pig Latin, it's basically like a really dumb encoding of words. So we take the first letter, put it on the, the end of the word, and add A. So igpe, atenle, ca, ulke, or elohe, earldwe. <laughs> so basically, we're going to take the first letter, put it on the end, and add AY at the end of the word. Let's try it. Are you guys excited for me? You stopped chatting, but we got the debugger working, right? You're excited? I'm excited. <laughs> um, cool. Let's do this. All right. So here's my thought. We will. Um, Let's, instead of using built-in methods, because we could have like split this on spaces and then change each word in like a map, let's do this, try to do this in a single for loop. Let's take a quick break and then we will do this challenge. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Okay, so here's what I want to do. We are going to um, iterate over string. Okay. Um, this would be so much easier with a split and a map. Uh, let's do with a split and a map first, and then we'll see if we can do with a for loop. Okay, so here's what I want to do um, split string um, on space. And then map um, the words, and we're going to return the word with the first letter at the end and a. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do: we're going to return string dot split. Oh, and then we need to um, map it and then join on space. Cool. So uh, split the word on spaces and then map that. And so you're going to get the word. But you want to return a word 
dot slice one. So that'll remo remove the first character. Um, plus word at zero, because that'll get the first character in the word, plus a. So that's going to give you the igpe. And then we will join that on the space to get back a string. I think it should be that, that easy. The, the, the challenge is going to be using a single iteration. OK. Sample tests. It worked. Cool. Um, but let's, let's try to do this with a for loop. It's going to be interesting. We're going to have several variables, I think. But let's do it. Let's create uh, pig Latin. Wait, we want that. OK, so we are going to iterate over the string. And we'll say um, store the first letter, because when we start the string, we need the first uh, letter in the string. And then we're going to um, iterate until we see a space. Yeah, and I guess we're, we're going to need a new string to build this up. So a place to store the pig Latin. Um, so we have our empty string. We're going to iterate over the string. We're going to store the first letter. We will um, append each next letter until we see a space. And when we see a space, we will append the current first letter and a y and then repeat yeah uh, in the question in the chat for how I did this with map um, how did the first letter get appended again um, yeah and so the the map function word is the full string uh, or the, the full word. So this would be like pig. And uh, strings are immutable. So when I do word.slice, that creates a new string that's just the end of the word. So word technically still has all of its characters in it. And so I can still do word at zero. Um, and then this does that for every single, wor every single word in that array and then joins it back together. OK. I think we can make this work with a single for loop. Let's see. Um, so a place to store the pig Latin. So let's say uh, let pig Latin be the empty string. And then we're going to iterate over the string. So let i equals 0. Well, i is less than string dot length i plus plus. So we need to keep track of the first letter. So let's say, um, yeah, first letter is that. Um, actually, first, we'll, we'll initialize it. We'll set first letter to be string at 0. So that's the first letter in the string. And we will start the um, the for loop at one, so it skips the first letter. So we've are, we're already storing the first letter, and then we're going to append each next letter until we see a space. So we'll basically say, if um, well, let's start in a variable. We'll say current letter is the string at i, and we'll say if current letter is not equal to a space, then we are going to append that. To, um, to pig Latin. So we'll say pig Latin plus equals current letter. And then 
Um, if the current letter is a space, we're going to append the current first letter. So pig Latin plus equals the first letter and A. Then we need to uh, reset the first letter. So um, let's say, and well, if it, because if it's a sp if it is a space, we actually need to put a space on it because that's going to append it there. And then let's overwrite first letter to be an empty string. And here we're just going to say. Um, if not first letter. So if first letter doesn't have a value, then first um, first letter equals current letter. Else we do all of this. And then after all of that, we return pig Latin. OK, let's see if it works. I have no idea. Say, sound, sounded right to me. I don't know. <laughs> let's try it. Will it blend? Node pig Latin. Um, that's wrong. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Igpe Atenlay. C A. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't do it for uh, the very last one. So we need to um, after all of, after the after the for loop, we need to we need to do this one last time. I think. Yeah. Cool. We did it in a single for loop. Let's see if it works. And why, why I'm excited about that is because if you have like a really long string, this split is going to take one full iteration of the string to find all of the spaces. And then map is going to need to do an iteration over all of the words. And then join is going to do another iteration to put it back together. But when you use a single for loop, this is actually a lot more performant when you have like a really long string. So let's try it. Sample tests. Oh, no. Oh, we put a space on the end. We don't want to put a space on the end. That's why. <laughs> so for the very last one, there is no space. Sample tests. OK, I have a feeling they're going to throw something tricky at us for the, for the full, full attempt. Drum roll, please. <laughs> It was that easy. Oh. <laughs> um, that worked. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to submit this one because I like it's a, a single for loop. Submit final. Cool. Um, that was it. We did it. Sweet. Uh, let's let's see how they did it here. Yeah. So they they did a the one of the these are like they they group them into similar code variations. Um, but this is basically what I did. You um, take the word without the first character and then the first character in the word and append a to it and then join it on the string. Um, this is super interesting. They're using a regular expression. So basically, they're saying uh, find every word followed by a space. And um, I think one of these is going to take the first, I don't know regular expression too well, but one of these will probably take the first letter in the word. Um, and then we're going to take our second match, which is this. OK, so I think this takes the first character in the word. And then, oh, sorry, this takes everything after the first character in the word. So this is dollar sign two. This is dollar sign one, and that's the first character. And then dollar sign three is going to be the space. Interesting stuff. Cool. Um, 
I think that's it for tonight's stream. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in and uh, participating in the chat. This was super fun. I am going to push all of my uh, code that I wrote tonight up to GitHub. You can find that at uh, github.com slash coding garden slash code cut us. And if you do have a suggestion for next episode, I do this every Wednesday at 8.20 p.m. Mountain Time. You can throw a comment in this GitHub thread or just throw a comment down below in this video as to what you might want me to try out uh, next time. If you want to tune in live, check out coding.garden. My stream schedule is there. Um, when you view it, it'll be in your local time zone. And also, if you check out my YouTube channel, I believe... Uh, yeah, I, I will all I'm I usually always have my upcoming live streams there. So tomorrow I'm gonna do at uh, 9 45 a.m. Mountain time These these times are one hour off for whatever reason, but tomorrow 9 40 a.m. 9 45 a.m. I do morning tea where I drink tea browse the web and talk about the latest JavaScript news and programming and tech news um, And then tomorrow night at 6 20 p.m. Mountain time. I'm gonna do a full stream Don't have the topic yet, but I will I'll update the title when the topic is announced. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, Emily. Cool. Um, I think that's it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I'm getting really close. I have, I've, I've doubled subscribers in the past month or so, but once I get to 1,000, I can start monetizing the channel and enable Super Chat. It's going to be a great time. But this has been another episode of Code Kata's Coding Garden. See you next time.